Hello again and welcome back to my channel. Now, project-wise, I've been in a bit of limbo over recent weeks because although I've moved some bits and pieces into the new workshop, we don't have any electricity in here yet, which hopefully is getting sorted next week. It appears it isn't just the timber industry that is having issues with finding materials. And anyway, the old garage workshop is currently a resemblance of a bomb site. So um, I'm kind of torn between where and how I can work at the moment. But my neighbor uh, gone in, uh, came over a couple of weeks ago and asked would I be interested in building three planters for him. And I said, yeah, that's fine, no problem. And I decided I'd do this at cost uh, and a bottle of wine because I wanted to experiment with a few ideas. Now, because only maybe Elon Musk and Bill Gates are wealthy enough to go and buy timber at the moment, I wanted to do this on a budget and I decided to do a few skip dives and raid my rather substantial offcuts bin. So the idea for the design, I've got the dimensions, which I'll just show here now. And I was given freedom to design how I want, really. But because I'm using largely offcuts, um, I needed a design that had lots of small pieces or that I could accommodate small pieces because I had plenty of two by fours kind of this size um, from when I'd done the when I'd done the floor for the workshop. And I've got lots of treated uh, three by two from uh, when I did the actual wall modules and a few other bits and pieces as well and some magnificent skip dives I've found recently. So I'm just going to sort of run it really and just show you how uh, I went about it. Um, the leg design, the corner leg design, uh, I'll tell you now, I ripped it directly off from John McGrath's excellent channel uh, and I'll leave a link in the description. I really like the chunky leg look and also because these are quite narrow it needed to be very sturdy. So uh, thanks for that John, uh, appreciate that and if you've been following me, uh, if you've been following me on my social media you'd have seen these kind of things coming through. Anyway enough uh, chit chat, let's cut to build and I'll see you in a bit.
So it was at this point, everything was going extremely well. Almost too well, you could argue. Now, the lengths that we've gone across was this stuff, which is, I think it's treated three by one, which I pulled a couple of lengths out of a skip. And the importance of always asking the permission was um, there was a big project going, a big garden design thing going on at a house down the road from here. And I found a couple of lengths of this off the top. So we're knocked and uh, the work was still going on. And I said, am I all right to get some this out and the fellow said yeah he said just hang on a minute it's not the first time this has happened to me either and he came round with one of the laborers with like two or three armfuls of the stuff and like three lads came and he said can you make use of this and i was like magnificent so this was forming the length of the frame because it did need some long pieces and i managed to get my hands on recently some uh, this is actually just a slice of it that i've cut off but it was kind of almost like a fence post thickness of this stuff, which was a hardwood. But again, on Instagram, I posted it. We think it might be some kind of teak or something. So as I'm rolling here, I cut myself some nice thick slices of it like this. And then I spent the morning getting my thickness up on the big table from the garage into the new workshop. And this happened. Now, to say I was pretty devastated is an understatement, and uh, it's, well, it's dead, completely dead, at a time when you really don't need your thickness of dying because you're working on a project, but also when you're looking at the replacement of availability, ugh, not the best, it's just started raining. All right, it's just cursed myself again. Anyway, so what I've had to do is I've gone with, I did, I do have plenty of this stuff, which I didn't really want to use because I could find loads of uses for this, but I'm gonna cut this down into kind of the smaller pieces, which I'm gonna use for the slats. So let's pick the story up from there. I better get the camera back in as it started raining and I better get the drawbridge up as well. Okay, I'll see you at the end. Forgot to mention at the start of the video, I sincerely apologise for the pathetic quality of lighting. All right, I've got these temporary lights. The only one decent one I have got, uh, I can't use when I'm filming because it just flickers all the time in the background. So I've got all the slats and stuff on now. Now, some of you might be quite particular when it comes to like lining up your fixings and stuff. I'm not massively OCD, but I do like them in a nice straight line. Well, I've got a new toy that I've been messing around with the last couple of weeks. Instagram followers will know this. So I found a really good use for it. Two little pencil marks on the end of my legs and, uh, well, let's roll the film.
Do you know that moment when it's the first cut of the day, thinking I've got loads to do, I'll get plenty done today, and you've just realised you've cut the mitres the wrong way? <sighs> to start these top pieces again. Which brings us to the end of this project and once again apologies for the appalling quality of lighting in here. Fingers crossed on the next video we will have some lovely panel lights which will make things nice and bright and not so shadowy. Um, just to finish, this is number two of three. The first one which was the smaller 130 centimetres has gone over to my neighbour. This one's just finished and I've got one more to do in the back. Now I have to say this, I'm really proud of these. Um, really pleased with how they've turned out. I've been learning loads of techniques, mostly from you guys on YouTube, and I've been putting those techniques into practice. And the way they've come out with, I'm very proud of them. I'm not gonna mince my words. I did start a conversation though on Instagram about actually selling these. Now, obviously I've made these predominantly from off cuts and uh, apart from the thicknesser incident, it probably would have been completely off cuts and uh, skip dives and stuff, but I costed it up from a local timber yard for the materials and you're looking at about 70 to 75 pounds just for materials to make one of these. Now, is there still a market out there for, what are we gonna be talking retail, 130, 140 pounds maybe? Are people willing to pay a premium over the likes of the stuff you get in B&Q uh, and other department stores obviously uh, for, what I'm gonna class a more, dare I say it, premium product. So it's a bit of a quandary I've got. They are really well built, they are built to last. I've not finished them because um, my neighbor, they said they're gonna actually paint them themselves. So these aren't gonna be oiled, apart from just on the cut edges or painted, that's for them to do. So let me know what you think, guys. You know, is there still a market out there for people willing to pay more than the average price, but for a more premium, quality product that will probably last as long as their house does okay as ever everyone take care look after yourselves and i'll see you soon thanks for watching